Hey, AMP students, we are now going to take a look at the sheep brain. Now, if you have not gone through the two videos on the human brain model, you got to go back and do that. In fact, you should have some solid brain knowledge in your brain before you watch this one. You want to know the parts of the human brain. You want to have an idea of what they do before we do this one. Okay? This is sheep brain. Check it out. This is an incredibly awesome looking sheep brain right here. Love this sheep brain. It's got gyri, the, the ridges here. It's got sulky, the grooves are sulky, of course. The gyri and sulky are there to give us more surface area. Got to have the sheep, you know, we need smart sheep. Absolutely. Now, the shininess of this guy is due to the presence of the pia matter, which is the innermost meninges. Remember, we got those three meninges, pia, arachnoids. We got pia, arachnoid, and dura matter. Remember, they pad the brain. And we can still see the pia matter, the shiny, plastic wrappy stuff on here. So, got a nice dorsal view of the brain here. Let's start naming some stuff. Then we'll cut this guy. We'll be done. Got the frontal lobe up there in the front. If we go back a bit, we're in the parietal lobe. Go back a bit more, we're in the occipital lobe. Pretty straightforward so far. We got the longitudinal fissure. Remember, a fissure is a deep groove. A sulcus is a shallow groove. Longitudinal fissure is separating my right and my left cerebral hemispheres. Right back there, we got the cerebellum, all right? We got the whole cerebellum right here. Beautiful cerebellum. Sheep have a really big vermis. The vermis in the human brain, eh, not that big. Here, the vermis is, like, really tall, really, you know, not quite equivalent, but a lot, but close to it, of the cerebellar hemispheres. So it was a lot smaller in the human being. All right, there's our right cerebellar hemisphere. You can see the folia on that cerebellar hemisphere to give it more surface area. Now, what we've done here is we, I'm gonna, let me go back for a second actually. Check out this transverse fissure right here, okay? That's a transverse fissure. Let's draw a line on that. Transverse fissure right there. There's a transverse fissure. What we're about to do is kind of like peel this transverse fissure open so we can see what's in that space. So, let's do that, and there we've done that. All right, so if we look at this guy, we got our right cerebral hemisphere and our left cerebral hemisphere. You can see those two. There's our right cerebellar hemisphere, left cerebellar hemisphere, and there's our vermis. And we've opened the cerebral, not the cerebral, the transverse fissure here. And what we can see here is the midbrain. I didn't want an arrow. I thought I switched it. There we go. Well, nope, didn't do it. There we go. So this is what we see in the opened transverse fissure. This is the midbrain. This is the back of the midbrain. And check it out. One, two, three, four. Four things there. Any guesses as to what those four things are? Well, if you said the corpora quadrigemina, or if you knew it was that C something, Q something, you're on the right track. Four bodies, four, four twin bodies, corpora quadrigemina. Let's start naming them. Top two are the superior colliculi. So that arrow right there is on a superior colliculus, the right superior colliculus. Remember, the two superior colliculi are involved in visual reflexes, like coordinating eye movement with head and hand movement. Welp, if we have superior colliculi, we are also going to have inferior colliculi. Boom, boom. Inferior colliculi are very much involved in the startle reflex. When you turn towards a loud noise, for example. Just guessing here. These guys are really big. These guys are really small. What sense is probably more important to a nice, friendly, young sheep? Think about that. All right. 
Now we've done flip the sheep brain over. Flipped it over. We're looking at the underside, the ventral view. We can see a lot of stuff. We can see the, the cerebrum. We can see the spinal cord. We can see brain stem. We can see cerebellum hiding right there. We can see a lot of other stuff as well. We're going to name a bunch of stuff. We're going to start with the olfactory bulb. There it is. Got this white structure here, and the tip of it is the olfactory bulb. That is where the olfactory nerves are going to come from the nasal cavity and synapse. So olfactory bulb right there. Now we switch sides, but it, would, it doesn't matter which side we're doing. We got the olfactory tract coming back here. Nice olfactory tract heading towards that temporal lobe because we know in that temporal lobe is where we have our olfactory cortex. So that is our right olfactory tract right there. Remember the olfactory nerves. We don't actually see them, but we know they're cranial nerve number one. All right. This is the optic chiasm right here. This is the optic chiasm, this chunk right here, okay? Now, here's the unfortunate thing. The unfortunate thing about a lot of the sheep brains that we get for dissection is that we don't always see the optic nerves. So, like, the optic nerves would be coming out like this. Okay? You know what? I'm going to undo that. Let's, let's see if will white work here. Let's see. Yeah. So the optic nerves be coming out like this. And right here, this region is the optic chiasm. Okay? Optic nerves will be going from coming from the retina, coming back this way. The optic chiasm is that crossover point. So optic nerve comes in. Optic nerve comes in. Not all the fibers are switching sides, but some of them are. And that X, where the switching occurs, chiasm means X. That is the optic chiasm. Okay, if we go back a bit, we get an optic tract. One right there and one right there as well. Two optic tracts heading towards the thalamus for that visual information to be sorted and routed and edited. So we got our two optic tracks here and here. If we go back a little bit, so here's the optic chiasm right here. Go back a little bit, there's a tiny indentation right there. That is the opening where the infundibulum attaches. Remember the infundibulum is the anchor that connects the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. They've been removed here, but we still see the spot. And I like that spot because it just gives me a landmark. I like landmarks. I can find my optic chiasm. I go back, just a, just a, a little a little hop here, and I got my infundibulum opening. Then I go back a little bigger hop. I got this white thing right here. That is the mammillary body, which is involved in our sense of smell as well as memory. Sheep only have a single mammillary body. We have two separate ones, and sheep it's like they've been fused together. Okay, mammillary body there. If we go back a tiny bit more, we're in the midbrain. So this is the midbrain right here. Beautiful looking midbrain. Very white because we got a lot of white matter, a lot of myelinated axons making their way from lower to higher structures. Now, coming out of our midbrain, we have an oculomotor nerve right there. That is an oculomotor nerve right there. It's more fun than when you got an actual brain. You can get your um, probe under it and kind of flip it up and make it flap and wave at you. But that is an oculomotor nerve. You and I both know the oculomotor nerve is one of our cranial nerves. Which one is it? Which number is it? It is cranial nerve number three. If you said three, you are right. Oculo, eye, motor, move, mint, moving. It does most of your eye movements. All right, so we had the optic chiasm, the optic tracts, the infundibulum, the mammillary body, the midbrain, and now we got an oculomotor nerve. If we jump back another bit, we're on the pons. Pons is bulgy as it was in the human being. 
bulgy pawns. Think about that P. That P always has a bulge in it, right? That bulge is for the pawns. On the lateral pawns, we see one of our trigeminal nerves right here. It's been cut. That is one of our paired trigeminal nerves. Kind of hard to see the other one right here, but at least we can see a little bit of trigeminal nerve. Trigeminal nerve, of course, is another cranial nerve. It is cranial nerve number, shout it out, number what? Number five. Number five is the trigeminal nerve. It is involved with muscles of your jaw, so chewing muscles, as well as face sensation. Facial sensation. All right. Awesome. Now we got our medulla oblongata. Beautiful medulla oblongata. Going to connect higher and lower structures, of course. Going to have a lot of nuclei for things like respiration, blood pressure, cardiac control, and more. So this is all well and good. And guys, with that, we are done with the external view of the sheep brain. And what we've done now is sliced it mid-sagittally. We made a beautiful mid-sagittal slice. We can still see the cerebrum up here. Check out that beautiful cerebrum up there. Got the same lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital. We can see our, our diencephalon right in here. We'll get to that in a moment. We can see our brain stem down here. Nice brain stem, spinal cord, cerebellum as well. Well, we're naming a very visible thing here, which is this white thing right here. That white thing right here is the corpus callosum. We know that is a very large group of commissural fibers connecting the left and right cerebral hemispheres. Beautiful corpus callosum right there. What else do we see? This shiny bit right here is the septum pellucidum. If you were to take a knife, a scalpel rather, and poke through it right there, you could get into the lateral ventricle. You could get into the lateral ventricle that way. Now, this white area here, this white area here is the fornix. It is another group of, of um, white matter. There we go. Connecting the cerebrum basically to the diencephalon. If we keep going... We see another great landmark. I love this landmark right here. That's the optic chiasm right there. Optic chiasm right there. I always recommend finding the optic chiasm in the mid-sagittal slice because as you're going to see, there's a, there's a beautiful diagonal line you're going to take. Once you find that optic chiasm, you're just going to go boom up this line here and you're going to find a bunch of stuff. All right, let's do that. Let's do that. So if we go right on that diagonal line, there's the hypothalamus right there. Hypothalamus, autonomic control center, controller of the drives, a lot of homeostatic things. It is diagonally up and back from the optic chiasm. Now if we continue on our line, we got this circle right here. Check out that circle right there. Fairly good sized circle. That is the interthalamic adhesion which, of course, is going to connect the right half of the thalamus to the left half of the thalamus. It is pretty big. In humans, it's like just this little dot. If we were to look at a, if we had a human, we would have like an oval-shaped thalamic hemisphere, then a little dot for the inner thalamic adhesion. Whereas here, there's not much like thalamus around it. It's almost as big as the entire thalamus. So we had optic chiasm hypothalamus, interthalamic adhesion, which of course is part of the thalamus. All right, now what I did, once I found that, I went straight down and I found my mammillary body. So I'm going up and I'm taking a little detour to go straight down. Mammillary body, very important for smell. Of course, remember sheep have one, you and I, we have two. And then I got back on my, di my diagonal line. Remember that diagonal line right there? Beautiful diagonal line. Awesome diagonal line. There's the pineal gland right there. 
also called the pineal body, it is going to make melatonin, which we know is that hormone that is essential for good sleeping. Okay, we had a diagonal line. One, two, three, four structures. We took a little detour to hit that mammillary body. Okay, if we jump straight down, doing a straight down jump again, we got our midbrain right here. We got our midbrain. Now, we know this is a midbrain. We could have started up here, because check it out, there's the superior colliculus. It's like if you find the cerebellum, so there's the cerebellum, right? There's the cerebrum, then the thing below the cerebrum, in front of the cerebellum, that is going to be the midbrain. That's the superior colliculus right there. Remember how much, how much bigger the superior one was? When we compare it to the inferior one, the inferior one is so little. We got our colliculi. We know our colliculi are part of our tectum, right? The colliculi make up the corpora quadrigemina, which is part of the tectum, which is part of the midbrain, which is part of the brainstem, which is part of the brain, which is part of the central nervous system, which is part of the nervous system, which is part of the human being, which lives on Earth, which is part of the solar system, and so on. Anyhow. Getting a little carried away there. I have a tendency to do that. I apologize. That passageway right there, cerebral aqueduct, it is going to connect our third ventricle, which we're going to find up here, to our fourth ventricle, which we're going to find in the space down here. So there's our cerebral aqueduct right there. Looking good. If we go back a little bit, we got our Pons, so we had midbrain, pons. Can you guess where we're going next? We're going up. Surprise, now you thought we were going to go from New Albongata, didn't you? But we went up, we went up to the cerebellum. We see the beautiful white matter, the arboreal white matter called the arbor vitae, the white matter of the cerebellum, looking nice. There we got our fourth ventricle, we pointed that out earlier. We can also see our medulla oblongata right there. Got our spinal cord right there. And guys, that is everything in the sheep brain. Might have been kind of fast. If it was, I apologize. Watch it twice, watch it thrice. As many times as you need to. Give me some questions via email if you got any. I am here to answer them. Come by my office hours, talk to me there. Yeah. All right, I will see you all later. Bye-bye.